Hey, this is Sky. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Go check out my website at skyazrael.com for life coaching and mentoring. It's Wednesday. I'm going to do a little study group for my warriors. Let's do an addition to the Sunday study group. I got more to talk about. I think I have a couple new subscribers with my study groups. It's really just for my hardcore heads. Gives you guys some extra stuff to think about. Let's get into it. Sometimes people don't give us what we need because they don't have it. This happens in relationships quite frequently. You may have high expectations of somebody and they may not be able to reach those expectations. Your expectations might not be that high. You may just expect some basic, basic respect, kindness, and appreciation. And they've never given that to you and you wonder why. Do you hate me? It's not that they hate you. They may not be able to give you that. And it's your choice to keep them in your life or to get rid of them. But I think it's important to know people's limitations. Especially the people that you love. Let's move on to the next one. Pleasing people around you isn't part of your purpose in life. Basically, when you die, you're not going to be judged by people. Maybe you will. The, the tabloids may talk shit about you. But when you die, you're judged by God. You're not here to please people. <laughs> Fuck people. You're here to please God. People try to get you to please them all the time. You turn and say, I'm not here to please you. That's not my purpose, is to fucking please you. Move on to the next one. Independence is freedom. I've definitely found that in my life. The more independent I am in different ways, the more free I feel. When you're dependent upon somebody, you can turn into their slave. be independent in your life, you'll be unstoppable. Cancel culture has a lot to do with people's dependency upon society. So it's easy to cancel you when you're so dependent upon your job and you work for a big company and you desperately need that job. Sky, I need this job. I can't afford to get fired. I got bills, man. I, I know you do, brother. I know you do. But as long as you are, you are dependent upon that boss to feed you, He's your master. You've turned into Oliver Twist. Please, sir, give me more. You're begging every week for your money. I'm not coming down on you for having a job. I'm just telling you, independence is freedom. They can't cancel you if you're self-employed. next one. I want to talk about independence for a while longer, but I'll do a separate video on that. This is kind of an interesting topic. Go out to you young men out there. There's no shame for young men to be virgins. There was a lot of pressure when I was a teenager and a young man to have cheap sex, one night stands. Random hookups. Go out on a Friday night, Saturday night, to a bar or a party and try to get laid. That was our mission. That's what we lived for. Fucking and fighting. When I was 21, that's all I did was fucking fight. And I had a rule. I would hang out at bars every night. And by midnight, if I didn't have a woman on my shoulder to take her home and bang her out, I'd just point at some dude across the bar and be like, you, I don't like you. We'd just fight. I'd fight four nights a week. <laughs> Sex and love are separate. Prostitutes don't love you. 
Strippers don't love you. Sluts don't love you. I don't care how much she squeals, how much she says, yes, yes, daddy, do it. Dad, I don't care how much dirty talk she gives you, how wide she spreads open her butt cheeks for you, that look she gives you when she's down on her knees. It's not love, brother. It's not love. Sex is not love. So don't be ashamed of being a virgin. Be pure. Go to your wedding night a virgin. Have your first experience with your wife and make sure she's a virgin too. I, I only wish I could have had that experience. I regret being so sexually active as a teenager. Here's a question for you. Let's go on the next one. Is it impossible to stay the same? Or does everything change? Always change, all the time. And we can't ever stop it. Some people say change is a good thing, and I generally think so. I'm proud of how I've changed, and I hope that I continue to change. When you have goals, that's an aspect of change. I have a five-year plan, a 10-year plan, and I certainly hope in five years or 10 years I'm not the exact same person I am right now today. What if you like how things are? What if things are going great? And you're like, this is really cool. If I could just have things be like this forever, I'd be happy. Can we just stop here? Can we just hang out here on the path of life? And this is cool. I don't need to go no further. This is it. Sure, there's more to go, but I like this. Is that even possible? What if you find a society or a town, a place, a location on this planet, this giant planet, that you really dig? Does it have to change? Does society have to change? Sometimes I wonder, I mean, because there is this postmodernist idea of, with postmodernism, the idea is to tear down what was in the past because the past always sucks, the past is always stupid, the past is always unevolved and not useful to the future, so we tear it down. We don't build upon it, we tear it down. That's postmodernism, tear it down. Destroy it, tear down the statues, destroy it. Everything must change. That's the way life is. Or, or is this your philosophy? Is that we, we have to change, always have to change. Everything has to change. We have to tear down everything from the past and continually rebuild it. Just an interesting way of looking at things. I'm not a postmodernist, if you figure it out. I'm a traditionalist. I like tradition. I love those Norman Rockwell paintings. Those kind of paintings bring a tear to my eye. They do. I love that shit. Your worth and value doesn't come from your friends or your family. It comes from God. Stop looking for validation and acceptance from other people. People will disappoint you. God never will. You have better relationships if you learn to love yourself. Let's do a couple more. Here's an idea from Buddhism. Loneliness is egotistic narcissism. You're lonely. So lonely. You just desperately want people to love you. I'm so alone. And no one loves me. What was that song we used to sing when we were a kid? No, no, everybody hates me, nobody loves me, everybody hates me, I guess I'll go eat worms. Big fat skinny ones. No, uh, what was it? Big fat juicy ones, long skinny ones, I guess I'll go eat worms. Why did we even sing that song? That was a song that they made us sing as kids in the 70s. Anybody old enough to remember that song? Now the Buddhists feel like loneliness is your ego. Your narcissism. You're focused on yourself way too much, son. You never get lonely when you're in service to others. When you're focused on others, you're not lonely. Let's go to the next one. 
our cities, civilization. Do we talk about civilization? Where is civilization? Civilization isn't out in the woods, right? It's not in the woods. When we talk about being in civilization, you're talking about being in a city. You go to a small town and you think that you're out of civilization. I'm leaning forward because I'm trying to avoid this beam of light that's trying to burn me. <laughs> I looked at footage the other day of San Francisco, it was video footage, someone was doing a walking tour of San Francisco and I was watching online on YouTube and that doesn't look like civilization to me, man. Los Angeles, that doesn't look like civilization to me. Philadelphia, you seen fucking video or footage of Philadelphia? Oh my God. I used to love going up to Philly. That's not civilization to me. Cities are not civilization to me, not no more. Let's go to the next one. We'll do another couple more and we'll end it. This year you're going to have to make a choice. You're going to have to make a choice this year. In the next 12 months, you're going to have to make a choice. And it's not between Democrat or Republican, conservative or liberal. between good and evil. You're going to have to choose. God or the devil, you must choose. Nobody's sitting on the fence. You're going to have to choose in the next 12 months. Choose. Choose now. Let's go to the next one. You know what pisses me off is this weak version of Jesus that Hollywood puts out. They make Jesus to be this bitch. This little soft, weak, passive hippie. And he's always like, oh, peace, brother. And he has this bullshit that he says. The, the view of Jesus in Hollywood is always this pacifist, weakling, beta male hippie. Was he really like that? Go read the Bible. The Bible isn't about no fucking hippie. Hollywood is. Hollywood is emasculated your God. Made you worship a pussy. Jesus was militant, motherfucker. Jesus was, was real deal. He'd knock the table over uh, of the bankers. Jesus would go around preaching stuff that really, really freaked people out. And that takes a certain amount of guts. Some little beta male whip isn't going to be able to do any of the shit that Jesus did. Go read the Bible. It was not about some pussy. That's Hollywood who's emasculated your, your God, your, your prophet in order to take away your power. Look what the Hollywood has done to all manhood, not just Jesus. All of manhood is being attacked. Hollywood's turning all manhood into just a, an image of some pussy, some bitch, some soft little weak-ass motherfucker. That's every single image of men. Go find one. Find one image of a strong man. Even the superheroes are these whiny little emotional bitches. Little skinny little bitch motherfuckers. Fuck Iron Man and Thor and all these losers. Little betas. Hollywood has done this to you. Don't trade your soul for a good life. This is the next one. I'll make this one the last one. Money won't get you into heaven. All you're focused on right now is trying to get rich. You want to be the next Wes Watson, Andrew Tate. You keep telling yourself, that's the life, that's the life. Heaven on earth, that's what you think it is, right? Hedonism, luxury. You got it wrong. You're following the wrong people. That's why I like David Goggins, man. David Goggins is right on time. I really like that dude. I really think that he's a, he's a good guy. And when he talks about suffering, inducing suffering, adding suffering into your life is so incredibly valuable and important. On the other side of your suffering is your greatness. Your greatness isn't found in gated communities, in Lamborghinis. Your greatness isn't going to be found in hedonism. It's going to be found in the dirt when you're sweating covered in blood and mud. That's where your greatness is. Food for thought.